and stranded in the harsh Arizona desert, 150 miles from civilization, without any food or water. One individual, with incredible determination to survive, sets out on an impossible journey to save his life. For eight days, he battles with temperatures as high as 120 degrees and endures the pain of an unforgiving terrain. First walking, then staggering, and finally crawling the last eight miles of his grueling 150-mile journey. There, lying stripped of clothes, rescuers discovered the badly blistered, bruised, and severely dehydrated body. The man had lost over 25% of his body weight to dehydration, a percentage loss that should have been fatal. As the doctors began to examine and treat him, they noted that his lacerations were not bleeding. What's the status? It's very serious. Really dehydrated. It's left with still alive. However, as the survivor became hydrated through large amounts of fluid, his wounds began to bleed. According to experts, this man exercised little, if any, appropriate survival skills. Yet because of his powerful determination to live, he managed to survive. An old wilderness proverb says, survival is 90% mental and 10% physical. The story of survival often clashes with popular notions of what survival entails. Most people emphasize the importance of purely physical aspects, such as constructing shelters, preparing signaling devices, and procuring food and water. While these activities are certainly important, they are nowhere near as crucial as starting out with a strong will to survive. Don't think that simply having a well-equipped survival kit and practiced survival skills is going to save you. You need an extra advantage, a psychological advantage of having the will to survive. The likelihood of surviving the challenges of being stranded will be greatly diminished unless you have a strong desire to live. Sure, you can practice specific survival skills, but you won't know how strong your will to survive is until you're faced with an actual life or death situation. Is anybody there? Can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? However, certain steps can be taken to strengthen or reinforce your will to survive. First, you must know the basic needs and priorities of survival. These priorities must be met whether you are at home or stranded in the wilderness after a forced landing. Being prepared for a survival situation will increase your confidence and reduce your psychological stress. By reducing your stress levels, you will enable yourself to better concentrate on your will to survive. In a survival situation, priorities are based on how long you can survive without certain physiological and psychological requirements. The most basic priority for survival is oxygen. Oxygen is crucial. Without it, your survival time can be measured in minutes. In a post-crash survival situation, bleeding is the most common way loss of oxygen can occur. As blood leaves the body, so does the life-sustaining oxygen contained within the blood. The loss of blood can cause unclear thinking and eventually loss of consciousness. Therefore, life-threatening injuries shall ultimately have the highest priority. You must be prepared to deal with these types of injuries. Educate yourself on emergency techniques that stop bleeding and learn methods for treating other injuries. Even minor injuries should be treated because the pain from these injuries will only persist and intensify with time. Be aware that pain from injuries, even minor ones, can cause significant stress in an already stressful situation. By becoming knowledgeable with first aid techniques, you will not only increase your ability to cope with injuries and pain, 
You will increase your confidence level, strengthening your will to survive. Because maintaining body core temperature is an essential requirement for survival, shelter becomes an immediate priority. In extremely hot or cold environments, survival time can be measured in hours. With this in mind, it is important to remember, when you are in a survival situation, the most immediate shelter you have available is your clothing. It's unfortunate that most pilots dress for the cockpit environment, giving little consideration to the types of environments they will be flying over. The stress caused from being too hot or too cold can wear you down, both physically and mentally. Maintaining the body's core temperature is a survival technique in itself. It may seem like a mundane skill in the everyday world, but in a survival situation, it can be overwhelmingly difficult. Reading books on the subject will help, but should be no replacement for hands-on experience. You must not only learn the skill of building a campfire, you need to practice it. Also, know what's involved in constructing a windbreak. And make a habit of putting extra clothes aboard your aircraft. Wearing and carrying proper clothing and having knowledge about building a fire and creating a basic shelter can greatly reduce the stress associated with temperature. Sharpening up on all of these life-saving skills will empower you to overcome the physical and mental stress created by extreme temperatures. Water is your next essential priority. Without it, you can only expect to survive three to seven days. And because there is no guarantee that you will have suitable drinking water, the water contained in your body may be your only source. Therefore, you must attempt to conserve it by restricting physical activities to the cool of the evening and early morning. An old survival adage is to conserve your sweat, not your water. If you have water, distribute it equally among all survivors and drink as much as you can when you can. It's important to remember as you become more dehydrated, your brain will become less efficient. As your mind deteriorates, so does your will to survive. Initially, when forced into a survival situation, you will experience a sudden adrenaline rush. This adrenaline flow will cause subsequent nervous energy ultimately placing your entire body on edge. In this condition, you are not doing yourself or your co-survivors any favors. An effective survival strategy is to sit down. This will alleviate tension and excitement from the situation, as well as help you and everyone else think more calmly and logically. So after treating injuries and establishing adequate shelter, Calm down and rest. Denying yourself adequate rest will simply cause your body to shut down. To help you remember this, think of the word stop, sit, think, observe, and plan. Whenever you are not sure what to do next, just sit down where you are. Think about specific objectives you are trying to accomplish. Observe any potential obstacles that may lie between you and your objective, and plan a course of action. This simple checklist can help you avoid wasting valuable energy and resources, allowing you to progress towards your goal in a practical and logical manner. Believe it or not, finding food should be your lowest priority. On the average, a person can go up to 30 days without food. However, if you do have food, eating could have a significant influence on your odds of survival. In regards to hydration, you should attempt to avoid eating unless you have an ample amount of drinking water. You must also concern yourself with the type of nutrition you eat more than the amount. For example, proteins may be good for building muscle, 
but they require a large amount of water to be digested. Just remember, eating foods with proteins when you are dehydrated will only make you more dehydrated. Contrary to protein, carbohydrates are considered to be the best type of food you can eat in a survival situation because carbohydrates don't require much water for digestion and they give you almost instant energy. Additionally, foods with fats are good for long-term energy, but hopefully, with any luck, your survival experience will be brief. The important point to remember concerning food is do not eat any food unless you have ample drinking water. Consequently, not eating, especially during specific times you're accustomed to eating, will cause severe hunger pains. This type of pain can create severe psychological stress. The urge to eat can actually preoccupy your mind and may even affect your will to survive. To counteract the stress created from hunger pains, try to occupy your mind with tasks that will help bring about your rescue. Being alone and stranded in a survival situation can be a traumatic experience in itself. But the stress associated with the feeling of being isolated can be a very serious matter. Humans simply need other humans for basic companionship. It is easy to take this interactivity for granted. Communication, physical contact, the exchange of ideas, reassurance, and security are all but lost when we are alone. physiological and psychological response to a perceived threat. People who are frightened typically go into the fight or flight mode. They react to a threat by either standing their ground or running away. Individual reaction to fear may depend more on the person than the situation. Be aware that fear can manifest itself consciously or subconsciously. Conscious fear occurs when dealing with a direct, life-threatening situation. While subconscious fear, being less conspicuous, can be more difficult to define. You're scared. You're uneasy. You're apprehensive about the number of dangers out there, like poisonous snakes hidden predators, and other potential hazards associated with an unfamiliar environment. This type of fear can easily escalate into a full-scale panic. Panicking will cause you to make poor decisions that could endanger your life. If you are going to combat fear, you must first realize when you are frightened. Here are some common signs and symptoms of fear. Quickening of the pulse, dilated pupils, perspiration on the palms of the hand, dryness of the mouth, and a feeling of butterflies in the stomach. Only when you admit to yourself that you are frightened can you take positive action to conquer your fear. This is why survival training makes all the difference. Adequate survival training will not only prepare you to survive after a forced landing, but it will give you the confidence that you need to strengthen your will to survive. When you ask most pilots about applying their survival skills, they will probably state, well, I won't be out there that long, or I'll file a 
flight plan and make sure that my ELT is activated, they're sure to find me. This response is one of denial, a denial that stems from a pilot's own fear. An effective means of conquering this fear can be as simple as packing a survival kit. By being prepared, you are admitting to yourself the possibility of being faced with a survival situation. More importantly, you will have a greater sense of control should an unlikely event occur. Knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it can provide the skills needed to survive the most unfortunate of circumstances. All of these methods, together, will strengthen and enhance your psychological state of being, your mindset, and your will to survive. Oh, that's it. Oh. Most survival skills are based on common sense. Always expect the unexpected. With proper training, preparedness, and confidence, you can prepare yourself for the unknown. You can prepare yourself against all odds. You can prepare yourself to survive.